Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are here because you want to know or you want to learn how to take the best insect macro photos, you are in the right place. Stay with me in today's video because I'm gonna show you everything I use, my techniques, my photo setting, my equipment and everything I do to have my best macro photos of insects. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are in a very warm evening. Now it's 6.30 p.m. and it's still 30 degrees. It's really so warm. I didn't want to go out in the middle of the day, something like 1 p.m., 2 p.m. because it was really so warm. And they were, they were writing the weather forecast. They were writing a warning that it will be really so warm in the middle of the day. So that's why I waited uh, to the evening. Now it's something like five degrees less than the middle of the day. And I'm, I'm here today, it's very uh, close uh, woodland area, uh, close to me, but big at the same time. And you know, searching for insects, you can go anywhere you want. Uh, you just woodland area with a lot of trees, a lot of grass and grass and meadows. So I hope today I will find a lot of insects, a lot of different insects, please, not mosquitoes. I don't want to see <laughs> any mosquito today. So, let's search together. I think I found the first one. A, a beautiful lady bird and I want to take a photo of it. So, oh, there's a bee and there's a lady bird. I hope I can take photos of them. I didn't make anything uh, in terms of my setup and I need a little bit of time. As you can see, I have today the camera strap because I want, obviously, to put it right here and to take photo anytime I want. Let's try to be a little bit fast. I hope that the insect, the ladybird, will wait for me. Let me just try to take this photo and after that I will have my time to talk about the setup. So let's talk a little bit about the setup that I'm using today. I think some of you know it. I was using it more than one time last year. As you can see, I don't have a macro lens. I'm reversing my 50 millimeter lens. And what I like about reversing this lens is that there's a aperture ring and this ring allows you to adjust the aperture and at least you know the aperture number that you are using. Like now, for example, I'm using 16, 11, 8, 5.6. So that's why I love this lens because it has a aperture ring. When you don't have a aperture ring and you want to reverse your lens, all you can do is just playing with this small metal piece to be able to adjust the aperture. And you can't know which aperture you are using. But because of this aperture ring right here, I can know which aperture I'm using and I can adjust it so easily. Now I'm reversing this lens but I'm not attaching it directly to the camera. I am attaching it to Nisi close-up filter. This is a close-up filter from Nisi and obviously allows me to be closer to the insects and allows me to take bigger photos of the insect. The first element is the reverse ring. Obviously you need a reverse ring if you want to reverse your lens in order not to hold it with your hand. The reverse ring allows you to attach the lens directly to the body of your camera and not holding it with your hand and have the danger of a lot of dust entering the sensor of your camera. I have the first element, the reverse ring, 
and after that the Nisi close-up filter after that my lens I just have a small ring right here because the filter size of the Nisi close-up filter not like the filter size of the lens I'm talking about the light source I'm using the exact same flash my flash speed light it's the Godox V862 and N is for Nikon it's fantastic and it's so fast and so strong and I'm using as you know I'm using just a softbox uh, obviously for the light to not be so harsh on the insect As you could see, I, I could find a lot of insects. Actually, I'm the exact same two, three meters. I didn't move and I, I could find a lot of insects on this area here. But the problem that I'm having because of the using of this flash, as you could see, I'm having a, a black background. And I, I really want all the photo to be, you know, uh, like, for example, a green background or something like that. But this is the problem of using a flash and when the background is so far away. Like here, for example, I'm taking a photo of the insect, for example, right here. And the background is so far away and that's why the flash, the, the, the flashlight won't hit the background. The background will be black. I prefer to have in macro photos, I prefer to have, you know, a background green background to, to, to have vibrant photo. The color of the insect and at the same time the background green vibrant background. To have something like that the background should be near the lens and not far away so that the flashlight will be hitting the background also and not only the insect. So there's something I want to tell you about using this setup. If you haven't ever reversed your lens and you, you want to try that now, I became some comments asking me that after reversing my lens, for example, my camera is not taking any photos. Now, after removing the lens and reversing it, the body of your camera is not recognizing any lens. That means it's like not attaching a lens at all. And if you are using your camera on auto mode or let's say aperture priority or shutter priority, your camera won't accept taking photos or won't allow you to take photos. Let me show you, for example, if I want to put my camera to auto mode, as you can see, it doesn't allow me to take photos. Program, the same. Shutter priority, aperture priority. If I want to use manual, it started to take photos again. So using this setup, you can use your camera only on manual. And I'm going to tell you why. When the camera is not recognizing any lens when you are using auto mode or, or shutter priority the camera want to calculate the light which is coming through the lens to decide which aperture which uh, shutter speed which iso this is the auto mode the camera wants to decide how to put these three the iso the shutter speed and the aperture but when using manual mode i'm taking control of everything. I don't care if the camera can see a lens, can decide the scene is overexposed or not overexposed. I don't care because on manual mode, I'm taking control of everything. I think the only downside for me for using this setup and not getting a macro lens, because I said the camera is not recognizing any lens, that's why the camera won't tell you in the viewfinder, for example, or in the, the back screen of the camera, won't tell you if you are overexposed or if you are underexposed. And that's why every time, every time I want to take a photo, for example, if the light is changing, if I take a photo of, of uh, insect in shade area and after that insect in under the sunlight, the light is always changing. That's why 90% I don't get the right exposure because I can't read what the camera is telling me. If this photo is overexposed, if the photo is underexposed, this is the only downside of not using a macro lens. You take a photo and you find it, oh, it's overexposed, you adjust your shutter speed. 
speed you take the photo again and after that you just turn around and take another photo the same location and you find oh it's underexposed you adjust your shutter speed again and that's why as i think this is the hardest thing in using this setup the reverse lens is that your camera won't, won't tell you that this setting will give you an overexposed photo or will give you an underexposed photo you have to try and you have to discover yourself and you have to adjust it all You can see the insect is right here and the problem with this method actually is that I have to be so close that a lot of times I want to take a photo of a specific insect but because I come so close it flies away as you can see I take a lot of photos coming back and forth to be sure that the insect is in focus I really don't know what is that. I saw that right now from the back screen of my video camera and I'm not sure is it an insect bite or what, but it doesn't hurt me. I don't know. Uh, what I wanted to say, the biggest problem in insect macro photography is that you have to keep in mind that you are working with very active and crazy creatures. They don't allow you to be close. They don't allow you to take your time. They don't allow you to think about anything. The minute, the second I try to be a little bit close with this big soft box, it flies away so fast or it starts to, to, you know, to walk so fast, to run. And yeah, I, that's why it needs, actually it needs a lot of patience. You have to walk behind the insect twice, three times, 10 times. We still didn't talk about the insect bite about the mosquito bite yeah it, it needs a lot of patience and yeah but it's, it's beautiful it's beautiful especially if the insect looks beautiful you know like bee there's a lot of yellow color like the ants for example i love also to take photos of ants but i hate mosquitoes i won't ever think about taking a photo of mosquito i hate them man as some of you may know the best technique that you can use to get the sharpest macro photos is focus stack but as you know right here the insect is not dead they are moving <laughs> they are moving and they are always in movement that's why focus stack is nearly impossible to do the only one way if you are lucky enough and the insect is not moving at all you can take as much as you can for example till 10 photos and after that merge all of them in photoshop focus stack and the fo and photoshop will merge the photo for you will for example first photo the focus is on the first eye the second photo on the second eye and you just try to take photos as much as you can back and forth and after that photoshop will merge all of them and will give you the sharpest possible it's better than using for example f22 it, the photo will be not sharp at all and take only one photo let's say for example uh, using f11 and take 10 photos and merge them together you will have the sharpest possible photo mm. 
so as you can see right here I took four photos the other photos are the insect completely out of focus or repeated focus in the same area of the body of the insect so I came up with four photos and as you can see it is completely the raw file I didn't make any adjustment now I tried to merge all of them but Photoshop couldn't merge them because as you can see the insect moved its antenna a little bit just look at this photo and the second photo there's a little bit of movement and that's why I can't use this photo this photo the focus is only on the antenna now the second photo this is my interest photo this is what I like because the focus is on the face of the insect the second photo as you can see I made here a small mistake or a big mistake actually as you can see the focus is right here and here the focus is at the end now there's a small area in between which is not in focus I checked all the 12 photos and no photo where the focus here as I said because it's so small area I think it's even smaller than one millimeter and that's why it's so hard and that's why as I said you have to take photos as much as you can and try even to check the focus on the location to be sure that all the body is in focus on the back screen of the camera I didn't do that on location this is my fault I thought I took 12 photos the insect will obviously be totally in sharpness I took this photo the 94 and this photo the 95 and I merged them together and as I said this is after merging them after Photoshop merged them together and as I said as you can see this is my fault that I didn't take a photo the focus in this area as you can see the insect uh, face is in, in, in focus and behind the end of the body is also in focus and this area in between is not in focus as you can see this area of leg of the legs is also not in focus because because this area is not in focus so this is the difference between this photo and two photos focus stuck so these were all the photos for today thanks a lot for watching I hope you could find any important information for you in today's video in terms of reversing your lens or in terms of using speed light or in terms of as I was talking about focus stack. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you like the photos, especially the plus 18 one yesterday. <laughs> uh, so again, thanks a lot for watching. Please consider subscribing if you are not already and see you in the next video. Bye for now.